Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm back. If you want to know where I've been, I'll explain it at the very end of the video. But for now, I'm painting the Primaris Lieutenant from the Indominus box set, the one with the Volkite shield, or Volkite gun, and the Storm shield. Now, I have already assembled the model fully, and I've already primed it with Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer. And now with Eschen Grey, Grey Seer, Uriel Yellow, and White Scar White, we're going to do the pre-coating. So with an airbrush, we're going to paint Eschen Grey from the underside to create the shadows. Then we're going to go and do Grey Seer from up above to create the light, so there's light and dark shadows. Now the experiment I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Uriel Yellow, and I'm going to dry brush all over the armor, and try to basically highlight it in yellow. And then I will take White Scar White and dry brush the other things, like the leather, the capes, uh, some pieces of the metal, yeah, stuff like that. And then once that is done, I will then go back with Uriel Yellow and Lamian Medium, which I didn't showcase, and I will fine tune all the lines and edges. And now with Mephiston Red, Lamian Medium, Cadmium Red, and Burnt Umber, we're going to paint the red armor. So I'm going to do Mephiston Red, one part Mephiston, and like two or three drops of Lamian Medium and a drop of water. I show the mix, and then I'm going to apply this all over the armor. Once that is done, I'm going to take Cadmium Red and mix in an amount, a good amount of Burnt Umber into it until it creates a very dark brownish red. And then I'm going to add a little, just a little bit of Mineral Spirits, apply it into there, and turn it into a paste, uh, a paint but a paste-like uh, consistency, and I'm going to apply it all over. This kind of was a bit overkill. Then I wiped it heavily with a sponge, and once that's done, I added more Lamian, or no, no more mineral spirits into the paint, creating into a thick wash, and then I applied it all over, and then I wiped again. But this was still too dark, the highlight, uh, the light, bright colors were gone. So I then took a brush and some mineral spirits, and you see me dipping it into what looks empty, it's not, there's mineral spirits in there. And then I just wiped down the most raised areas and stuff to create the brightest lights.
switching gears, I then take Liquitex modeling putty and I apply it onto a 40 millimeter base because it takes like a night for it to solidify and dry. Now moving on from that, I then go back with some Lamian Medium and Uriel Yellow again and then just re-highlight all the edges of the armor because they weren't as bright and prominent as I would have liked. This didn't work. It looked too silly cartoonish. So I adapted. I then uh, took a little bit more of the wash I made with the Cadmium Red and Burnt Umber and then I applied it all over to sort of like darken the yellow. It didn't really work. Alright, experimentation has gone wrong, so with a 1 to 1 mix of Wild Rider Red and Mephiston Red, we're going to paint up all the yellow highlights with this. This is will be a brighter red that will be noticeable, and this should fix like the cartoonishness. Then I'm going to do a second coat of this, but I'm going to mix two parts Wild Rider and one part Mephiston Red. And basically for all these lines, I will paint over them again with this brighter color. Um, basically on the most raised areas of each line, circle, whichever piece that hits the light. Alright, now with Eschen Grey, Dawnstone, Administrative Grey, and Lamp Black, and of course Mineral Spirits to go with it, we're going to paint the cloak. So we're going to start off with a layer of Eschen Grey. Then we're going to create an oil wash and just apply it all over to create shadow and depth. But for some reason, it really did not work too well. <laughs> Alright, and then I went back with Eschen Grey and re-highlighted all the stuff except for the deepest, darkest recesses, so about 95% of the cloaks. Then I went with Dawnstone and highlighted around half of them, like 60 to 70% of them. And then I went with Administrative Grey and do fine highlights on all the most raised areas, probably like 20 to 30% of each of the lines. And with Mornfang Brown and Gorthor Brown, we're going to paint his belt. So basically, just a simple layer of Mornfang Brown, and then highlight by applying it to the edges of the belt. And simple, easy, done. Alright, with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and XV88, we're going to paint the gun holster and the little pouches on the back. I forgot about them right now, but like I go back and redo them. So basically, we apply a layer of Mornfang Brown. Then we apply Agrax Earthshade all over for the shading. Then we go back with Mornfang Brown and paint the edges and the flat areas and there are these small subtle like wave or hills on the gun holster and so we try to leave the deepest crevices of them with Agrax Earthshade. Then we do a one to one-ish mix with Mornfang Brown and XV88 on the edges, uh, thick edges of all the things and on the more raised waves of the center part of the gun holster. And then with Pure XV88 we do fine lines on all the edges and a little bit on these little waves. Unfortunately, I think I overdid it here with this color. I made too many waves when there weren't some, so it looks a little off. All 
All right, now we're gonna use these metal colors with Vallejo acrylic, metal color airbrush, exhaust manifold, and duraluminum. Basically, dark black metal and very bright silver. So with the dark black, we're gonna paint all the metal, uh, like these joints and stuff. I just like the color because it works well with the red. I think so. And then with duraluminum, we're just gonna paint the edges, like gills, frills, whichever of these metallic pieces. Yeah, simple. All right, with Mephiston Red, Wild Rider Red, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're gonna paint the wax parts of the purity seals. Now, the thing is, since their armor is red, they already look red enough, so I have to make these seals much more brighter, essentially. So we start off with the base layer of Mephiston Red, and then we're gonna put a dot of it in the center of each purity seal, uh, those without the skull, and we're gonna do the entire circumference of the edge of each purity seal. And then with Troll Slayer Orange as a final color, we will apply this, a dot in the center, and uh, uh, basically create a crescent moon on the upper more raised parts of each circle of the purity seal. And with Ulthwan Gray, the air, because it flows very good, I'm just gonna apply this onto the shield with just a little bit of water, just one to two coats if needed. Okay, so I'm not really going to use my washes stuff because that so far really hasn't been successful at working with the Space Marine Gold. So what I'm going to do is going to go to a more traditional method. So with Liberator Gold, Retributor Armor, and Dura Aluminum, it's just a very bright silver that works consistently. We're going to paint the gold. So we're going to start with the darkest color, Retributor Armor, and just apply it all over the gold, basically it. Then with Liberator Gold, we're going to highlight by covering 50 to 60% of all the uh, Retributor Gold. And as far as the helmet, we're gonna paint the flat parts of the armor, uh, the open parts. We're gonna leave the recesses uh, with Retributor Armor. And then finally, with thin layers of Dune Aluminum and the edge of a brush, we're gonna paint the edges of, well, all the bright gold pieces to help highlight it further. Alright, so with Steel Legion Drab, Agrax Earthshade, Bane Blade Brown, Rakarth Flesh, and Rhinox Hide, we're going to paint the Purity Seal Paper. So what we're going to do is start off with a layer of Steel Legion Drab all over. And once that dries, we apply a layer of Agrax Earthshade all over. Then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight by painting around 80-90% to 90 of each Purity Seal back with Steel Legion Drab. Only the deepest recessed folds of the papers will still have Agrax Earthshade Pure. Then we'll take Bane Blade Brown and paint all the edges, the upper raised areas, basically whatever we painted with Steel Legion Drab a second time, probably paint around uh, 60 to 70% of it with Bane Blade Brown, focusing on the edges, the folds, and little feathering techniques into the open planes. Uh, yeah. And then with Rockarth Fesh, we're going to paint the edges and the straight lines across the most upper raised folds of each of the papers. And then with Rhinoxide, we're going to take a thin brush and we're just going to apply tap tap taps or maybe a few straight lines in to create what looks like words at this point. I, the reason why I'm doing such a strong dark brown color is because it will stand out and be noticeable. Um, this is kind of a little hard thing to get right. Uh, sometimes if you put the dots too close to each other, too thin or stuff, it'll look bad but it's hard to say. Alright, with Caliban Green, Warpstone Glow, and Moot Green, we're going to paint the eyes. I'm going to choose them to be green so that they'll stand out. So 
We start off with a base layer of Caliban green, filling in the eyes entirely. This is our base layer. Then warp stone glow, we're basically going to paint like 90 to 80, 80 to 90 percent of the eye. Basically, the top part of the eye, and pretty much all of it except for like the bottom crescent of each eye, if that makes sense. And then with moot green, we're going to paint a drop on the upper back of each eye, away from the center. Alright, with Wild Rider Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Warp Stone Glow, Moot Green, Morphing Ground, XV88, and I don't show it here, but Rhinox Hide, I'm gonna practice. This is an experiment, so I'm gonna do some free hand. So, his uh, coat of arms thing, little mini shield that he has on his chest, I'm going to basically paint a bunch of green and red squares on it. So I start off with a base layer of Wild Rider Red, and then I do Warp Stone Glow, the, the darker the green color, and create the squares. And so basically what happens is I pour out almost all these colors just a little bit on the palette and I keep going back and forth of tidying up the lines, going from red to green, green to red, to straighten up the lines. Then I go to their Troll Slayer Orange or the Moot Green, the lighter colors, and I try to fill in like around half of each of the squares, the upper halves. Sometimes I go back to the Wild Rider and Warpstone Glow to tone down the colors or mix them in. This is actually a back and forth process because penmanship on this is hard. And then with Mornfang Brown, I basically I try to type in an I or like a letter one symbol and then highlight it with XV88. Basically, I paint an I and then I try to paint the upper part of each horizontal line of the I with it and a little bit along the edges of the center. But it didn't really stand out so much, so then that's where the Rhinox hide came in. I then came back in and just painted the outline of the I and then I kept coming back in with colors, fixing it back and forth. So this was a very big back and forth job. It wasn't me just applying some paint and then being done with it. It was apply some paint, apply some more, go back to the other color, fix up some lines. So this is probably not the best way of doing this, but it's practice. All right, with Agrax, Earthshade, Skeleton, Horn Contrast, and Gullman Flesh, we're going to be painting the uh, gun. I just wanted to add a little more depth to it. So with Agrax, Earthshade, we're going to take a fine brush, and we're going to apply it directly into the uh, recesses. We're not going to brush over the whole thing. Then we're going to take Skeleton, Horn Contrast, and cover, like, the last quarter to third of the gun to create, like, the appearance of, like, dirt scaling, stuff like that. And then we're going to add Gullman Flesh to the last little bit to make it look like the more recent, more fresh Scoring, scarring, dirtying, yeah. Alright, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Wild Rider Red, we're going to paint the glowing brightness of the Volkite Pistol. So with Corn Red, we're going to fill in the coils in the area around them. Then with Mephiston Red, we're going to take it and we're going to overbrush onto the areas around them to create like a little glow. And then with Wild Rider Red, we're going to do the same thing, and then, I don't show it on here, but I take a fine brush and I just paint the coils directly with Wild Rider Red to make them look better. What I should have done is I should have taken then, like, um, Troll Slayer Orange and done an overbrush, a light overbrushing of the area to make it look like the brighter light, and then do fine uh, highlight lines on the coils with the Troll Slayer Orange, but I just didn't. Alright, switching gears and going back to the base, I then take some Elmer's glue, the gel version, and then I apply it all over the base as best I can think I did, because sometimes there's always gaps, and then I apply it into the sand. And then once that dries a bit, I then will take some Liquitex matte varnish, which is this is the only thing it's good for. I then ap apply some drops onto it, and then a drop of water to help it flow better, and then I spread it all around the base. The glue was to help it survive this, because it just will flow around and might be picked up and create a mess. So the glue helps hold it down for this, and this is what keeps it down for good. Alright, so with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, uh, Skeleton, or not, Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, I do not use Rackarth Flesh in the end. I continue to paint the base, so now it's completely solid in there, and I start off with Mornfang Brown already on there. I skipped videotaping that step. I just apply Agrax Earthshade all over, and then I rapidly dry it with a hair dryer on a taped to an object so I don't burn my hand holding it, and then I dry brush Steel Legion Drab all over. And once that's done, I dry brush Bane Blade Brown all over. And it works, I don't think I need to apply Rack Hearth Flesh. So then what I do is then I take some super glue and I apply some drops here and there, and then I apply like a 
this tall grass thingy onto it. And it looks good, but it's a little too bright and contrasty. So then I take some Agrex Earthshade, which was a lot thicker than I thought it would be. And I basically <laughs> made the grass look like the dirt. So basically what I did was, I, I fixed this, I basically just infused water into it with a dropper and it diluted it and the color reverted, not fully back. I just wanted the grass to be a little darker, not black. And so I was able to fix it in the end by just infusing it with more water until it worked. All right, and back to assembly. So I sh use model glue, I assemble the whole model. Well, that was crap. So I cut, uh, trimmed like a lot of the pegs from the model because like it's so hard to get them on there. And so in the end, as I was gluing it and putting it together, it just kept falling apart. So I went back, I took it apart because it fell apart easy and then just used super glue to glue it. So super glue worked <laughs> where model glue didn't. And then for the base, I then took super glue applied to the feet and then applied them onto the base. He's very poorly adjusted because the sand and stuff is rejecting him. It's like he doesn't have much grip there. So what I do is I then drill a hole through one of his feet and then take a paper clip, a piece of a paper, paper clip uh, trimmed with some pliers and then bent into an L shape with like a spatula, a steel sp scraping spatula. And then I just insert it into his foot with some super glue down there and then applied super glue after the fact. And now he's really solidly stuck to the base. And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I then apply this to his shoulder pads, some of the armor pieces. I avoid the metals as best I can. Also, I applied the decal. I forgot to record it, uh, but I got a little bit better at doing it. A little bit better. And uh, yeah, the model is done. And done. This took way longer than it needed to be, made many experiments, a lot of trial and error, and it kept flopping hard. Ugh. Well, the yellow didn't work. So this was an experiment of a lot of different things. My yellowing didn't work, it didn't work how I planned. The pre-coating didn't really work how I planned, except for like the Eschen Gray and Gray Sear, the base creating the white and dark. The highlights that I painted didn't really work until afterwards. I did this before with two models, just like the, the Death Guard model I painted before, and this, uh, whatchamacallit, this Black Templar. These lines work, but for some reason, like, red really just screws it over, so... Maybe it... Also, Space Marine armor, it seems to be very difficult to get, like, with the dry brushing, the, uh, the metal plates and stuff. I remember for the Black Templar model I did, the High Marshal, or the Marshal, I had to paint the lines afterwards because the dry brushing wasn't really working too well. Because their armor plates really feel a bit smooth. So it's like, like you have to know when to try to do the pre-coating. I guess like with a, some model with fur or rough skin or stuff like that, the pre-coating will be great. But with something like this, uh, they're a bit harder to do so. So maybe I would just skip the dry brushing entirely and do edging after the fact. Maybe. Um, yeah. So overall, as a model, I'm going to have to give it 7 out of 10. Just a lot of things didn't work. Uh, I mean, it looks fine now, but like, this is a single model, and I did a lot of more traditional painting with it instead of my usual washes because, like, they just weren't working. So the metal washes weren't, or don't work with the aluminum dura aluminum like they used to. Well, they used to be more transparent. The dura aluminum is so strong that I create washes that just solidify, and I couldn't find a place to work with it, so... <coughs> it's... It's like, it's knowing when to try to use fast techniques and when to use more traditional techniques because using more traditional techniques with these guys will in the end be faster because I there was a lot of redundancies in my painting of this model. I had to go back and undo a lot, repeatedly. So that was disappointing. Um, and I guess it's just learning growing pains. Uh, no. 
All right, as for the model, I'll give it 7 out of 10. It's not a 6 out of 10, but it's a 7 out of 10. Nothing great, nothing special. Some things hold it back, some things are just good. The free hand is not the best. I probably should have just put a decal there instead of trying to do the eye or one. Yeah, there. Uh, a lot of my simple standards have pushed up. The leather is good. The metal is fine. Uh, first time I, well, long, it's been a long time since I used the Games Workshop metals. Uh, they look okay. Volkite gun is just completely uninspired because I don't know what it's supposed to look like. Like all the boxes and stuff really isn't helping. I just know it has a glow, so so I got no inspiration for it. Well, all right. Anyway, so overall, uh, eh, it was okay practice. Eh, I guess Blood Angels aren't. I can't seem to make them work easy. All right. So as to where I've been, basically, I moved for the first time in 22 years, and. Uh, I did not think it would take this long to get resituated. I figured I'd have another video up six days after the last one. I was very wrong. Just like I was wrong that I thought I lived like a monk and had no possessions. I was very wrong. My Warhammer stuff is so large and extensive it took me two and a half days to reorganize and set it up. I even had to rebuild my painting table from scratch, take it completely apart. I made it from like scrap wood from Home Depot just so it could fit in the new dimensions of my new place, which is sad because I like that big square. It was much easier to organize and like slow down by just adjusting and taking care of a lot of responsibilities here and things like that. And and also like I was like in a flow back in my old place of painting and stuff and so like it was kind of difficult to get back into the habit of painting although I really did enjoy it. So I do have a genuine love for painting. It just was difficult to get back to it. So hopefully I'll be working back into it. Um, so yeah. So my next model, it depends. I ordered something that could be cool, but if it doesn't come in, maybe an orc, maybe another chaos. I don't know. We'll see. So like the video, like the video, comment if you want to comment, share it if you want to share it, and like it if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, and more to come much sooner than this big gap. Bye.